Well, it's another beautiful morning here in northern Wyoming. Temperature in the mid 20s. A little bit of clouds. I'm glad it's below freezing as it usually is this time here in the morning because the ground is froze up so there's no mud. And I should be out of here before it thaws. I'm a little short on time this morning, so I've got to make it relatively quick because I've got to get to work. So I'm just going to go straight up top, the spot I found Hans the last few times, around the dog up there. If I don't find anything, I'll just toss him some pigeons and call it a day. So we'll head up top. It's a decent wind, I'm guessing about five miles an hour. I didn't measure it, but it should help the dog going right in her nose. Might be on point up there. So the flash has stopped, you guess, as he stopped. Five hundred and sixty feet away. Let's see if I can get a better look at him. Pretty sure I can barely see his tail, but the GPS says he stopped on this line.
Yeah. The line's waiting on nicely. I have no doubt the point's good. But even if it's not, I've got pigeons with me, so prepared all around. Most likely huns, but it could be sharp tailed grouse too. That's a nice sized group. Okay, that's a marsh hawk, not an eagle. Or not a marsh hawk, I mean a rough leg hawk. He is right down there. Oh, is that him sitting on the edge of the brush of the dip, the hill? That might be. Yeah, he put it in to that cover right down there. Well, also, should we go ride it out and catch it? Most falconers would call their bird in and be done not want to do the rat hunt and I totally get that but I like to I, I feel like I'm not holding up my end of the job of flushing quarry for my bird when I don't pursue and finish when he clearly wants to Clyde doesn't care if he kills it from a thousand foot pitch or just grabs it hiding in a bush. Just us humans that have these weird things about we want to kill it but only in a certain way. And of course every falcon is different, you've got to treat them differently. You go with what's best for the that falcon at that given time. And for Clyde, he's going to be 10 years old, he's pretty well set in his ways. I've compromised a lot with him, there's a lot of things he's wanted to do that weren't really my desires, stuff like this. And I realize that Bird's going to be happier if we compromise. So he did. The team, not just the dictatorship. So Clyde was sitting on the ground right here by this bush and he's now flown up to the tree and there's a rough lake hawk over there that'll be inconsequential Astro, down in here! Right here Astro! Astro, come! Right here! Come here! Good boy, right in here, find it! Right in here, find it. Yeah, you smell it, don't you?
Right here, find it. Get it up. Astro, come here. Don't give up. It's right in here. Come on, down here. Find it. Find it. Find it. Find it. Get it up. Find it. Find it. Right here. Find it. Astro. Astro, come here. Astro. Right here. Right in here. Find it. I know it's in here. Astro. Right in here. Find it. Find it. Maybe it's not. Check the the GPS spot. Yeah, that's right where Clyde put it into. It's right here. Find it. It's in here hiding. Come here. Come on, find it. Find it. I guess it could have scored out the other side when he came in after it. I didn't see any of that. It was over the hill. Find it. Right in here. Huh. Well, if it's in here, it's holding super tight and Astro can't smell it. Looks like Astro split one of his pads, bleeding a little. This icy, crunchy snow is hard on feet. Well, I guess maybe it's time to give up. You smell it anywhere? Clyde thought it was in here. I think you're wrong, Clyde. I think it scored it out. Oh well. There's Clyde sitting in a tree. We'll hike back to the top of the hill. Call him in and call it a day. Well, most long wingers, if they were to reflash that, which a lot would not. 
or I should say attempt to reflush, that's the thing, actually, reflush, they would want their bird, of course, to go back up and wave on again, which is completely understandable. And for a peregrine, that would be really their only hope of catching it. The peregrine lands and it flushes, the odds of a kill are greatly, greatly diminished. But Clyde, over all the years, lots of hawking, lots of huns, knows that huns, after they put in, are both winded and terrified. So they're not going to go far. And he also has better acceleration out of a tree and speed than a peregrine would. And so he can easily catch him in that manner. And I've allowed him to do so. And you know, there's times that I, when he was young, I didn't set out to allow that, but things happen. Things flush on their own, different stuff. Had times where I had him on the truck getting ready to go, and the dog's on point, and we're just a little too close and the quarry bumps. And of course he tail chases it off. So, keeping up the lie that he can't just fly stuff down is incredibly difficult. And it gets more difficult the more you hawk and the more years go by. A peregrine there would have waited on, been a completely different style of flight. And many falconers prefer that because they're very focused. I've about said narrow-minded, but I don't know, that's a little judgmental. Um, we're killing in the stoop from a waiting on position and a very, very high pitch, the higher the better, is the only way to do falcons and long wings. And that's fine if they're happy. It's just very difficult to maintain with a bird over years when you're hawking, especially when you have marginal slips. If you've got tons of great slips, wide open country, far from cover, and you've got enough core you can pass up slips that aren't perfect, and you have a lot of discipline, you can keep a bird flying high for quite a bit of their life. They still learn after a while though that they don't need to be a thousand foot to catch a hun. 300 foot of work. And so you got to keep up that lie going in the bird that the only way it can be successful is to go very high. And that's all very tiresome and difficult. I prefer to just go out and have fun. All my birds settle into very utilitarian pitches, which for Clyde with his speed is lower. He can be successful at a lower pitch than the prairies and peregrines I've flown. The prairies and peregrines generally settle in for a pitch of about three to four hundred feet on ducks on small ponds and about five hundred or so for upland game. Clyde is less than that, but he still, I enjoy flying him. He's sometimes frustrating, but what bird isn't? I've thought of what else I would fly, but I definitely don't want to fly another one right yet. I'm having a hard enough time finding slips for the one, and I'm not ready to get rid of him. I like him too much for that. So we're gonna press on with him the way he is and enjoy it for what it is. I have worked hard in the last couple of years of getting him to not tail chase pigeons far when I toss them. Before I really never would toss him pigeons other than the beginning of the season when he's out of shape because he would just chase them so dang far. But I've done a number of different tricks that worked to get him off that. He quit chasing sharp tail grouse long distances all on his own because he was never successful. He um, had several when he was about like two or three years old that he chased almost three miles. His speed kept climbing as he was going. A couple of times he got up to over 80 miles an hour in the tail chase, chasing sharp tail and still did not catch them, bugger fast. 
And since he never caught one on long tail chases, he quit on his own. And it was after that that I decided maybe I could break him on chasing pigeons so far. It's just a mindset mostly. I started by taking him out and stooping him to the lure. The first session I stooped him, oh, probably 30 times enough to where I saw his beak hanging open. And then I tossed out the pigeon. I figured that's kind of the equivalent to beginning end of the season when he's out of shape. It worked, he didn't chase it far. Came back, tossed him another one, didn't chase it that far, called it quit. The next day, I did the same thing, but only stooped him about maybe 15 times. And I did I used the exact same field the very next day, so it's still fresh in his mind. I've come back. And then the third day, I just went out and didn't stoop him at all and tossed the pigeons. And it worked. And since then, I've tossed pigeons occasionally. I also, when he's tail chasing a pigeon, I've been able to yell and swing the lure and get him to break off. And so doing that combination of the two, that hasn't been perfect. He is still a jeer and loves the chase. I say, that's enough stooping. Okay, here you go, buddy. But he's gotten a lot better where I can toss some pigeons, which has been very handy, especially this year when it's been tough finding slips. Upland game numbers are a little low, but the biggest thing is obviously no duck slips. Cut into my pocket a lot. And so it's helped. He's a nice, pleasant bird to handle. He is particular about having other people in the field, and really particular about having strange dogs in the field. But he's got a lot of good traits. Dependable. He never does boogers off. The only time I have to go after him is when he's chased something. But he never just takes a powder just for whatever reason, which is always annoying. Get a little blood on you there, Astro. Is that from your foot? Or did you rub your balls raw on the snow again? Did that another day where it was deep snow. Now he's licking his foot. You got a split pad there, buddy? Here, let me see. Oh, it's a split nail. Also has worked hard this year. Definitely could have used the second dog this year. That little bit of breeze definitely helped. And a nice solid point. It's good. With the flush, he was at an awkward angle coming down on the hun, the one he picked, so he wasn't able to connect with it. He's fairly maneuverable for a big bird, but not near as maneuverable as a smaller one for sure. A little Churchill Prairie or something like that would have been able to make that angle work.
use a, a leg mount transmitter as his backup to the GPS. I used to use a, a micro on the tail, but he really, really hates when I have to change the batteries. He doesn't like his tail being messed with, and he's really good about messing with his legs. So, with the compromise I made with him, I said, okay, I'll stop dicking with your tail. We'll put it on your leg. Okay, these pigeons can go home. Two hundred and forty foot. Not bad. Five point six miles. I, I stooped them a little longer than I intended, but that's okay. I do wish Marshall Radio had an option on their audible readouts on their GPS system that you could have it read out total miles. That would help me know how far to to keep how long to keep stooping. Get out of here. Go get ready and get to go to work. Thanks for watching.